Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to our third annual Best Vacuums of CES Video 2022 edition. The Consumer Electronics Show is the largest event of its kind in the world and showcases new technology in just about every field, from automotive to cameras to computers to weird toys. I like CES for its vacuum-related technology, mostly robot vacuums, where there is a lot to say this year, but I'm also interested in robotics in general and associated technologies which might be implemented in robot vacuums. This year, it looks like robot vacuums are getting close to their final form. In 2021, it became obvious that auto-empty bins would be the standard for premium robot vacuums going forward. Also, front-mounted obstacle avoidance sensors are likely to be a standard going forward, but there is still an open question as to which sensors would be included and which way those sensors would be configured, and I think they're getting closer to an answer to that question as we'll see. Speaking of a robot in its final form, the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra, which was announced at CES this year, might be very close to it. The robot itself seems to have had a power upgrade, as they're now advertising more than double the suction power from the previous version at 5100 pascals, though that could be just a programming setting with its new Max Plus mode, as opposed to an upgraded motor, but I'm not sure yet. In addition to the top-mounted LiDAR for navigation, they've given the S7 an impressive obstacle avoidance sensor suite, and this is the configuration that I think is going to be very close to the standard moving forward, which is one RGB camera, which is for recognizing objects to avoid and implementing object libraries and machine learning. The second sensor on the front is for structured light scanning to make 3D models of its surroundings, both of which combine with its new processor to provide a much faster and more accurate system according to Roborock. It's also paired with two front-mounted LiDAR sensors, which are crossed, which really brings together the obstacle avoidance system. I've tested robots recently that just had these crossed lasers, and they do quite well with obstacle avoidance, but this is going to combine all of that stuff together, and I think it's gonna be pretty impressive. The Roborock S7 Max V Ultra comes with a brand new auto-empty dock design, which not only empties the robot's dustbin automatically, but it also has two water tanks, one for refilling the robot's mop tank, the other, I think, is to catch the dirty water when the dock cleans the mop for you. If that system works really well, I could see it being a big game changer in the industry because it moves us one step closer to that full automation experience that I think customers really want. The S7 Max V Ultra will have some competition though, as another major player, Echovax, announced its new flagship at CES, the Echovax DBot X1 Omni. There's a lot less information available about the X1, but we can see that like the Roborock, it has the same basic sensor suite, the top mounted LiDAR combined with a front mounted camera, some kind of 3D sensor, probably structured light as well, but I don't know. And yes, it also has those crossed lasers as well. So the kitchen sink approach to obstacle avoidance. Also like Roborock, it has now doubled its power claims from previous versions and is now saying it can get 5,000 pascals of suction on max power. The X1 also has an auto-empty dock that claims to fill and clean mopping pads, though it's using the Osmo Turbo 2.0 mopping system, which uses two spinning brushes instead of one large pad that they've used in the past. A similar but much cheaper alternative to both of these was featured at CES, which is the DreamTech Z10 Auto Empty, which I coincidentally recently bought and have been testing this week. It also has a top-mounted LiDAR system combined with two front mounted crossed LiDAR sensors and some kind of front mounted 3D sensor, though I can't quite tell what the specific sensor or sensors are from looking at it and there isn't any obvious information online. I'll try to figure it out by the review, but in any case it's clearly the same idea as the others. It also has an auto empty bin system and a mop, though its mop is just the water filled plate option which is nothing particularly special and its base certainly does not clean the mop pad or refill its water. The Neato D9 and D10 were also featured at CES. I bought the D10 this week and should start testing it soon. I'm hoping for some really great performance scores because its tech looks pretty dated compared to some of its competitors, though they do seem to have lowered the price recently, making it a much more competitive vacuum on paper than it was. There were a couple of robots like the TCL Suiva 6500 and the Bona bv 351 aa that are also offering advanced features like AI obstacle avoidance and auto 
empty bins in the case of the TCL, but they're also offering UV light on the bottom for sterilization. This was seen at CES last year too, but it never seemed to catch on, so we'll see if UV light sterilization becomes a thing on robots this year. Let's move on to carpet and floor cleaners. Tinco has come out with a carpet cleaner, which they call the Carpet One. It has their eye loop sensor installed on it, so it can sense the dirtiness of the water and make various adjustments automatically, such as the suction power amount. It also has a power dry button, which blows hot air on the carpet while it extracts water. Its suction motor is rated at 1300 watts, which would make it one of the highest, if not the highest, in its class, though not by a huge amount. They advertise a heated water feature, which if it's anything like similar features on other carpet cleaners, it just maintains the water temperature. It does not make cold water hot per se. Other than that, I think we'll just have to wait for its release because there isn't all that much info out yet, but I am super glad to see an innovative carpet cleaner on the market where there hasn't been that much happening in the last few years. Tinko is also featuring its newest line of floor washers like the Floor One S5 and Floor One S5 Pro, which are currently available, and they do seem to have some significant upgrades from the S3, which I have reviewed, but I'll take a look at this later this year to find out exactly how it compares to the S5. Roborock has gotten into the floor washing market and has changed things up a bit with the Roborock Dyad, which looks like it has two rollers, but it actually has three rollers. In any case, the concept is very similar to the Dyson OmniGlide in that they both spin in opposite directions to clean the floor, and it's meant to give the user maximum versatility and flexibility in getting to hard to reach places. Like the Tinko, it also incorporates sensors that can tell how dirty the floor is and increase suction and other things accordingly. It also has a self-cleaning mode and a floor drying mode. The Roborock Dyad is scheduled for release in February of this year. Links in the description to everything that I mentioned, and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.